rule six, when you're using shortcuts to write tangent line approximations, three things we need to know. First thing we need to know is what coordinate we're dealing with. So we need to find a point that we're traveling through. Okay? Then we also need to know the slope. All right? You need to know the slope. And then once you know the coordinate or the point and the slope, what are you going to use? What equation are you going to use to write your tangent line approximation given a point and a slope? Well, we can use point slope form for a sub beam. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, what's the equation we're dealing with in example six? X to the what? Right? Minus what? Or plus what? x value we're concerning ourselves with? Two. two comma something. Okay, so we need to plug two in to figure out which point we're writing a tangent line approximation to. So what's two to the third, kids? Three. Eight. Two squared. Four. So eight minus four is four. four. What's the four times two going to be? Eight. 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 So we've got four plus eight, which is what? Twelve, Twelve minus the two. So coordinates got to be two comma. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just uh, zoom out on this a little bit. There's your point, two comma ten. You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know our, we're going to have a tangent line that runs next to this right here. Is that slope looking pretty steep at that point, or not very steep? Steep. Looking pretty steep, isn't it? Okay. Well, let's talk. Uh, we need to come up with a tangent line approximation. We already know the point that we're going to pass through. So if a tangent line approximation is going to be found by knowing what coordinate we're going to pass through, and we know the coordinate is what again? 2 comma 10. We would need to know the slope. But what's going to help us find the slope now, kids? Shortcuts. Okay, so let's find f prime of x here. Anybody want to take a guess at f prime of x here? Uh, 2x squared minus x plus 4. Pretty close. If I, if I pull a 3 out front, what would that be? Oh, 3x squared. My bad. Minus what? x plus 4. How many x? you got to pull a 2 out front. Oh, yeah, 2x. There we go. So now we can use that to find the slope at what x value are we concerning ourselves with? Two. So by plugging two in for the derivative, or plugging in for x, what slope are we going to have at that point? See, that becomes minus 4 and plus 4, so that just leaves. So 2 squared is 4 times 3. I'm getting a slope of 12 when I evaluate that. Is that what you guys get? So f prime of 2 is equal to 12. We know we're passing through which point, kids? We know the slope at that x value of 2 is going to be what? Well, so if I want to write an equation for that line of tangency, we're just going to use point slope form to write that. So here we go. Point slope form on our tangent line approximation, which is y minus y1 equals m times 
x minus x1. Okay, help me kids. <clears throat> What's going in for y1? So y minus 10 can equal your slope of <coughs> times x minus what? Okay, so I'll distribute on the right. We've got y minus 10 equal, you guys agree 12x minus 24 when I distribute? So what's my equation in slope-intercept form going to look like? Okay, so let's just be clear on this, kids. First thing we did is figured out what coordinate that x value is going to kick out for us on the original function. Okay, Once we knew that coordinate, we said, okay, now I need to know the slope. And if I'm looking for the slope, what do we have to do to the original function, kids? What did I have to do to this original function to find my slope? Shortcut. Shortcuts. Okay, we've got to find a derivative. Derivative is a way of finding slope for particular x values. Got here. Then we went point slope form. We have a final equation of 12x minus 14. So let's check graphically to see if that matches what we think we're doing. I'm going to type in here 1, 2, 12x minus. What do you think, guys? Does it look like it might be a line of tangency for that? Running closer and closer and closer, and now it's starting to pull away again, isn't it? So it looks like the only point that that's going to hit is what, kids? 2 comma 10. Okay. Nailed it, didn't we? Okay. All right. How are you feeling about this? Pretty good about that? Okay. Well, let's get back to the other heart of the matter of this. We know the shortcuts for derivatives now, whether it's a constant, whether it's linear, or whether it's some kind of a power. We know how to find those derivatives. Now, the hard part for kids is this, sketching, sketching graphs. And I, I'm going to try and make this very simple for you. So I think we should head to page two in our notes. Uh, this is actually kind of fun, kids. Okay. Sketching the graph of derivatives. Uh, I'm going to blow this first one up, and we're going to talk about the first one together. And then, um, then I'm going to have you try one over there and see, see what you can handle here, okay? First things first. Tell me right now where my finger is if the graph is positive or negative. Negative, 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 negative. Okay, the values are negative. So let's turn this over into saying these are all values for some function f of x. Now, if I have to sketch the what, kids? We're not sketching values of the graph anymore. We're sketching the values of the limit, which is the slope. Okay, start way over here on the left, kids. What's true about the slope values here? Is this increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So it's got positive value for slope, right? Until I get right about yeah. here. Right here yeah. at that point. Do you guys agree that's a peak of a graph? Mm -hmm. If I do a line of tangency to that, which I'll just maybe do here quickly. Is that line of tangency? What kind of line of tangency do you have up there at peaks? Flat. It's flat, but what kind of slope would be associated with that? The slope is going to be what value at peaks and valleys? Here's how I tell kids to graph derivatives all the time. Okay? When you're trying to graph derivatives of some kind of a power function like this, or polynomial function, or any function for that matter, I typically tell kids, step one, find zero slopes first. And those zero slopes occur at your peaks and at your valleys. Okay? So I have a peak right here. What's the slope here, kids? Zero. Okay? I have a peak right here, or I'm sorry, a valley right here. What's your slope right here at this point? What's your slope at this point? How many peaks and valleys do you have here? Okay, now guys, the number of bumps typically tells you that this is a fourth degree function, or a fifth degree function, I should say. But the thing you would need to understand about it is this. Here's what I tell kids to do all the time. Find your peaks and valleys. First thing you're going to do, once you know the slope is zero here, 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 and here, come down here and plot zero. OK? 
anything. Plot zero here. Slope is zero at this point, right? So plot that right there. And, oh, I don't know. Slope is zero here, so plot that point there, okay? First thing I've done is plotted points on the x-axis because those points indicate to me that on the original graph, that's where the slope is, what value k is. Yeah. You agree with that? Yep. Okay. Now, you may or may not want to do what I'm about to do. I'm not telling you you have to, but i got to tell you, it sure helps me a lot. Everywhere I just plotted zero here, ouch. I'm gonna draw a vertical line through it. Not a vertical line like this, okay? Okay, why draw these dotted lines, Barson? Well, I'll tell you why, okay? These help me These help me visualize what's going on. So if I look to the left of this dotted line, I ask myself a question, okay? I know I have a zero slope right here at this dotted line, but to the left of this dotted line, look at F. Is it increasing or decreasing? Is this graph increasing or decreasing? So to graph the derivative or the values of the slope right here, I would start by graphing positive values up here, okay? This is saying my slope is positive, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to what slope finally right here. Zero. Okay, so I'm going to plot that. I'm going to say, well, here comes my derivative. I'm going to plot positive values to here. Okay. Now, why did I plot positive values there? Because the slope was doing what here? And as I continue to move right, the finally the slope starts to flatten out, and the slope gets to be what value right here? Zero. Zero. Okay, that's what that point is. Now, go to between the dotted lines. Is my graph increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Slope is decreasing. Slope is still decreasing until it comes back to what? Zero. So to indicate that the derivative is negative here, I'm going to graph negative values down here, but I have to wrap around back to what? Zero. Okay. So I'm wrapping around back to zero. Uh, Okay, now, talk to me about the next interval. What's true about the slope and the next interval, or between the next set of dotted lines? It goes positive. So I'm going to go ahead and start increasing, 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 but I have to finally, as my graph is still increasing, steep slope, all of a sudden value here starts to flatten out towards what value again? Zero, the slope. So it's going to kind of go positive for a while, but it has to wrap back around to what here? Right? So describe to me what to do in this next interval, or really our last interval. <laughs> negative, 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 until it finally wraps around towards what? Zero. Right? Now kids, this is, this is a hard concept. And then beyond this dotted line, what kind of a slope do I have now? It comes positive again, okay? I want to show you something real quickly, and I want to relate this to powers. Think of the function 3x to the third, okay? Cubic functions typically look like this, kids. How many bumps? Two, okay? What would the derivative of 3x cubed be? Nine x to the second, right? That's okay. Either way, nine x to the second. Wouldn't that be a parabola right here? Wouldn't that be a parabola? Okay. By what value did my exponent change going from f of x to f prime of x? It went down how many powers? One power. Okay. How many bumps do I have down here compared to what I had up here? Went down one, right? Had two bumps up here. Now you've just got one vertex down here, right? Typically, derivatives, when you graph them, you'll kind of know you have them right if the number of bumps in your derivative, in other words, peaks and valleys, is typically one less than what you had in f of x. 
So look at the red graph here. How many peaks and valleys did you have? We had one, two, four. three, four. Take a look at what I've done with the derivative here in black now. One. One. Two. Three. Is it one less than what we started with? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to try the graph on the right. I want you to see if you can't graph f prime of x. And I should label my graph over here on the left. I should probably have called this f prime of x. And in red, this would have been the original function, f of x. Okay, so see if you guys can't sketch a graph of the derivative for that. This one's kind of a tricky one. Let's see what you get. Once you've got it, maybe check with the neighbor around you. See if you agree or if you get stuck. Help each other out. Got something sketched out there? Maybe, maybe check with someone on there, see if you agree. But if you do disagree, talk about what you disagree about. Okay. Well, I'm going to do something different on this next graph. It might help you see it better too. this way. Guys, I'm just going to follow my graph. We always read graphs from where to where. What direction? Okay. You guys agree that right here the graph originally is doing what? Decreasing. Where else is it decreasing? Sometimes I'll tell kids to color coat the graph where things are decreasing one color and then other part of the graph, call it the increasing part. Maybe that helps you see it better. Okay. So which color would represent negative slopes or decreasing graphs or negative derivatives, if you will? The green. And what represents increasing slope or positive derivatives? How many zeros should I plot right off the bat, kids? How many peaks and valleys should I plot? I'm going to plot one about here. I'm going to plot one about, you guys agree right about here? And then here? Okay. The question really becomes, kids, where do I start my graph? Okay. Is the graph decreasing or increasing first? Decreasing. If it's decreasing, am I plotting derivative values that are positive or negative? Negative. So to the left of zero, I need to start out with negative values and come up to what? Up to zero right here, and then they turn what? Until they come back to what? Then they go negative. So I've got to be down here and wrap back around to here. So this is kind of what it should look like. Start out with negative values. What happens after three? Positive. Back to positive. There it is. Now it's not maybe the exact same thing, but that's going to give you pretty close to that right there. 
Uh, what do you notice about the number of peaks and valleys relative to f of x, or the original function? I mean, it's something pretty darn close, or like the same general shape. How many of these had the zeros in the right spot in the same shape? Okay. Are you feeling okay about this? Again, not going to lie, this becomes a tough concept for kids. This one, maybe not as tough as some of the other things that are coming down the pipe, but right now, understand that, because that's a big concept. Okay. What questions do you guys have on example one then? All right. This just feels like a Tina and Pepsi lesson anyway. So what does the derivative tell us graphically? This is all kind of related. We're just going to read this kind of for our own information. What kind of talking about? This blue box is important. If f prime is greater than zero, meaning positive or negative, kids, so in other words, if f prime is greater than zero on an interval, then the graph is doing what? Isn't that what we just talked about up there? Okay. Then it says if f prime is less than zero on an interval, then what? Okay. What if f prime equals zero on an interval? Then what? Yeah, it's just horizontal. This is like saying the slope is zero. It just means it's horizontal over that interval. So let's talk here real quickly. Because in this example down here, things get a little trickier. Guys, exercise 43, figure 2.35 below, says it's the graph of what this time? F. F. Okay. This is not saying that this is some function we have to graph the derivative for. They're saying there was some function that preceded this, and they went ahead and did what for us? They graph the derivative for us. This is the derivative, okay? Let's just talk right here, guys. It says, where is this function increasing, okay? Well, you tell me, guys, if this is the derivative, then if I graph values that are below here, is that, I, now, I know this looks crazy, but guys, are these values down here for the derivative positive or negative? Negative. That means that between 0 and x1, the graph is doing what? Decreasing. Okay, because we don't have f. We're not looking at this as an increase-decrease. We're saying... These derivative values are plotted below the x-axis. This means that f of x was decreasing in that interval. Okay? What was going on then? You tell me what happened right here then at x1. What was the slope at x1? Zero. It went from decreasing slopes to increasing slopes. So it went, so this would be a peak or a valley point. Valley. It went from decreasing values to increasing values, so it'd be a valley down there, right? Okay. Now, between x1 and x3, is the graph increasing or decreasing? What kind of values do you have for your derivative? Maybe I should say it this way. Between x1 and x3, the derivative is positive, right? And when I say the derivative is positive, I can replace the derivative with the slope is positive. And if the slope is positive, that means that it is increasing. What's happening from x3 to x5? Graph's decreasing again, okay? All right, so read through that. That's just kind of your information, all right? Kind of your information right there. Let's run on to the last page here. See if we can't figure a couple things out. Two more things that we need to talk about, and we'll, we'll be good today, okay? Guys, do you have the page 110 assignment written down up here? Yes. I'll get some time to work on that tomorrow. I'm not sure we're going to get to the quick quiz today, and that's all right. So I like this example number three up here. I think it's pretty important. So this table 2.7 gives values of the function c of t, the concentration in milligrams per cubic centimeter uh, of a drug in the, the bloodstream at time t. So let's construct a table of estimated, this is a biggie, estimated values for what? For what? C prime of t. So we're going to be looking at slopes, right? Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go from point to point. Okay. Let's put our t values in here first. Point zero for zero. Point one. Point two. Point three. Point four. Point five. Point six. Point seven. Point eight. Point nine. And one. Okay. 
Guys, we're just going to look at the slope from point to point here to get an estimate of what or how quickly something is changing, okay? Well, let's just talk about the concentration. Where is the concentration increasing at from zero up to what? About 0.4. And then what starts happening, kids? The concentration does what? Okay, is so this going to be a U-shaped graph or an arch-shaped graph? So in the beginning, is my graph going to be increasing or decreasing? So should my rates of change or my derivative, should those be positive values or negative values in the beginning? Right? What kind of values do we hopefully end with in the end for slope or rate of change or how quickly something's changing? You tell me. Zero. Yeah, not zero. Negative. Should be negative. Okay, let's do this first slope. To get a slope at zero, we're going to use these first two points right here for slope at zero. So help me out, kids. What's 0.89 minus 0.84? 0 0.05 divided by this change up here of 0.1. Somebody go 0 0.05 and divide it by 0.1. Okay, so the rate of change is 0.5. Okay, let's do the next one for 0.1. What's a good rate of change? I don't know. What's 0.94 minus 0 0.89? 0 0.5. And then the change from here to here would be 0.5 again, right? Okay? I'm not even going to kid you right here. We see that this is 0 0.05 and we move back to 0 0.5, so we can make this very easy. A good change at 0 0.2 might be 0 0.4. 0 0.98 minus 0.94 divided by this change up here of 0.1. You see my pattern? What's my change here from, okay, 0.2. What's my change here, it looks like? Zero. Okay, what's this one look like? 0.3. Hmm. Positive 0.3, is it still increasing? It's actually going to start to do what right here? Make sure I get my negative in here, okay? So now, it's like this, 0 0.90 minus 0 0.97. Wouldn't that be negative 0.7 here, kids? And that negative 0.7 divided by 0.1 would be negative 0.7. What's the next one, kids? Yep. And then negative 0.14. And then negative point, I don't know, what is that? 22? Okay, now can I evaluate one at one with the pattern I'm using? Yes. No. Wait a second here. This should be negative 1.1, shouldn't it? Right? Do negative 0.11 divided by 0 0.01, or 0 0.1, I'm sorry. That should be negative 1.1, shouldn't it? This should be negative 1.4. This should be negative, what's 41 minus 63? Isn't that negative 0.22? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Aubrey. And is the last one negative 2.2? Do we have that one right, Aubrey? Help me out here. Lord knows I'm making lots of mistakes. Yeah. Okay. Guys, I have a question about this right here. Just thinking about the rates of change. At the very beginning, the rates of change were positive. Or were they big rates of change? Which, which I guess is happening at the beginning. Am I increasing faster at the beginning or decreasing faster at the end? Because the slope is going to be more aggressive at the end, right? Okay. Now, again, I don't really, I, I do care about what the problem is talking about. My goal for you guys is to say, what's the question really want us to find? And when it says, construct a table of estimated values for, in that last sentence, construct an estimated value table for what? You're basically finding the slope in each interval. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so I wonder, so if you see C prime of T, you've got to automatically think what? Slope, 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 okay? All right, well, let's uh, get through this last example here, and we'll have the notes done today. Okay, I like this problem. It says sketch a graph with the given condition. Here are your given conditions, kids. It says f prime of x must be, or x less than what? I'm just going to come over here to x at negative 2. I'm just going to draw like a vertical dotted line here, because I know something's happening at what value? Well, I know something's going to happen at negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to put that vertical line in there. Then it says f prime of x is what? Less than zero for up to what? So I'm going to draw another dotted line at two, maybe right here. Oh, shoot. Okay, we know something's happening from negative two to positive two. And then it says f prime of x. Okay, so here's the deal. We're sketching a graph, and I should have written this right here. We're sketching a graph. We want to sketch... Not the derivative, but we want to sketch f of x. Okay? So what this is telling me, kids, is this. There's a graph that exists. There's a graph that exists. That for all my x values left of negative 2, what's this saying? f prime of x is greater than 0. So that means the derivative is greater than 0. That for it means the... Uh, slope is greater than zero. So my graph everywhere to the left of that first dotted line should be increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So my graph, let's just start, I don't care where I start. I'm going to start maybe right here. Okay, that's the first part of my graph. Is the derivative of this graph positive everywhere left of negative two? Yes. So is f prime of x greater than zero for that function f that we're sketching? Is that true? Okay. Now, what happens to my derivative between negative 2 and positive 2? So is this going to be increasing or decreasing at this point? Decreasing. And then right here it becomes what value? So it flattens out there, right? And then it says f prime of x is equal to what now, kids? Well, if increasing is this way and decreasing is this way, what the heck is zero? Flat line. Flat line, horizontally, right? So beyond or to the right of this dotted line, what are you going to draw now? That's bad, but you get it, right? So this kind of looks like a baseball cap, right? Almost. Hey, just check it. Am I increasing? Do I, is f prime of x greater than 0 left of 2? Mm -hmm. Is f prime of x less than 0 between the 2s, positive and negatively? Mm -hmm. Is f prime of x equal to 0 right of 2? Mm -hmm. Have I met all three conditions? Mm -hmm. Das ist gut. Sehr gut. Ja? Schade. I think that's a good place to stop, guys. I think we got through all the notes, didn't we? Please make sure you...